Welcome to Circuit Analysis, I'm Jesse. Today we're going to be talking about ORCAD and how to download, install, and set up your ORCAD environment. So the first thing you want to do is download it. To do that you can just Google Cadence Login and that should do uh, like support.cadence.com is where you log in. And I've already logged in so that'll take you over to this page here and from here you want to go software download software and that opens up this new tab and here we're in Windows and this is the latest one right here ORCAD Allegro 17.4 now when you click on this it's slightly confusing because there's all these options uh, you can either download the um, files directly and install them, or you can download the installation program. So I usually just download the installation program, which is called the Download Manager. And that's this one right here. So you can just download this and install that. Once you have that installed, uh, you can search your start menu for just download and it should pop up. And then you can log into there. That'll take you to this. So this is the download manager. And once you're in here, then you can select over here, ORCAD Allegro, and then you can go down and look for Cadence 17.4, and then you can click the checkbox, and you can do here, download, and install, and then you have to wait for a long time for it to download, and then after it's done downloading, you have to click install, and then it starts the install process. Oh, another tip is sometimes it won't download because the download manager is not up to date, and the way that you update the download manager is by clicking close and it'll pop up and ask you if you want to update it before you close it. So sometimes you just click close, let it update, then um, open it again, and then you can download the program. Once you get all that set up, it might just work if you've got the licensing set up during the install, but if you need to check out the licensing stuff, there's a few things. Uh, so if you go Start Menu and Cadence, you can go to the License Client Configuration Utility. And that just takes you to this. So this is where you put in your license client uh, host server. So this right here is localhost port 5280. And this is set up right now just to use a license on a USB stick. If you're using a network licensing server, you'll probably have three addresses separated by commas like they show here. So either way, you just put those in here and you click Next and uh, save this. The next utility to be aware of is under Start and Cadence again, and then LM Tools, that's the licensing manager. You'll notice it pops up to confirm that you want to open it. So it's doing the uh, security check on Windows. So here is the LM Tools. The main tab I use is Server uh, Stop Start Reread Server. So this one here, if you're having problems with your license, a lot of times you can stop the server and start it again, and then that will help. Uh, for instance, if you ever unplug your USB stick when you're using a USB license, you have to plug it back in and then open this and stop and restart it before it will work again. The other thing is if you have a standalone license, you'll have a licensing file so you can reread the file with this button and then you can define the file over here, config services. So here's the path to the license file over here. So if you are using a USB drive, what I found, uh, since that's what I do a lot of the time, is when you're switching between computers, it's a little bit of a pain to pull up this 
dialogue all the time. And it's also a real bummer if you don't have uh, admin privileges or if you're on a work computer where you have to request special access to the admin privileges. So to get around that, I wrote a little batch script that resets the licensing server for you. And this is what it is. So you can just create a file on your desktop, just a new text file, and then rename it whatever you want, .bat, and then you type this code in there. So then you can just put that file on each computer that you use Cadence on, and then when you plug in the USB stick, you can just double click that file to run it, and it'll reset the server and it'll work. Now we're in Cadence here. We're going to bring up this test board. I think this is what we used for the last intro video. And we'll just go through a few setup things for the environment here. One thing is the default theme I have changed. So if you want to change the colors, you go to Options and Preferences. Then they have here the themes. So you can select this theme if you want everything to be bright or if you want it to be dark. And the schematic theme, same thing. The grid here, you also want to check out. I have it set up like you see here. One thing I've noticed is in past versions, sometimes the grid spacing is smaller. So you can get set up where you have an old file and you can't get the connections made or the parts to line up because they're snapping to a distance that's jumping past what your other parts are set at. So you can come in here and change this to like 2 or 5, or even 10. That gives you, the bigger this number, the finer detail you have of placing the parts. But I just leave it at 1 for normal stuff just to keep everything spaced out and have a lot of room. A lot of times I like to just get rid of the grid too. If you uncheck that, and then the grid just goes away. It's a little easier to see it. The other thing on here is this pan zoom. Sometimes if you're zooming in and out a lot, you can change your zoom factor so you can have a finer, uh, rougher zoom when you do control and then you scroll. So control and scroll, I've got it pretty fine here. 1.1 times. As far as the layout, I pretty much just use it like this. You can grab all these things and move them around. It's a little funky at first, but if you use these ones on the side here, this is the main frame. And then if you use these ones here, it's in the subframe. So um, you can get everything the way you want. You want to make sure you have a few things like the command window and these status bar showing, so you can do those under the view menu. Command window here is where you can type scripts and you can see what's happening. If you want to clear that, start it fresh, you type CLS, clear screen. We'll check out pSpice now. So I think this test project has some pSpice in it. If you have multiple tabs and stuff, you can switch back and forth here and you can move them Move them back and forth. So we're going to click the play button to run this pSpice. So here's our pSpice simulation. And this one comes default with a dark theme now too, I think. So you kind of have to do the same thing. Tools, options, and then here you have these um, different color settings. Theme, you can change it to light or dark. These ones here for the colors, what I always do, it comes with this set so that it's flipped like this. And that looks, some people like it like this. I like to flip that. But once you do that, you have to flip all the traces too. So you go back to tools and options and color. Make this one white and this one black and then you can move these colors around here so available colors here and then the trace colors here and I only do I usually only look at three main traces 
So you just want to pick three dark colors that are easy to see. So I usually just do black, red, and blue as my three main colors. Uh, so you just click on them over here and you click add over here and then you can click on these and click like up and down to get your top three colors like this. The other thing is the cursor settings. So you're going to want to change these to two dark colors as well if you're using the light theme. And that's about it for here. So we'll close this. And the only other thing I want to point out here is in the simulation settings, you have to do this, I think, for every project or every time you make a simulation profile. But I always go to probe window and the default is always all markers on the schematic and I put last plot. And what that does is it makes it so that if you rerun the simulation, it just keeps whatever you were looking at the last time, these same signals here, it doesn't um, start it off fresh based on the probes that you have set on the schematic. So that's it for P-Spice. Let's go back here and check out the board layout. So we're going to go launch the board. Here's the PC board program. This one has the dark theme. And I guess it's a little inconsistent, but for some reason, I like the dark theme on the board layout, but I like the light theme on the other programs. So uh, you can change this one too, but I just leave it like this. And this program is the one that actually takes the most amount of setup for me. It's very unintuitive the way that it's laid out and the commands, but it does allow you to put in a bunch of custom shortcuts. So I'll show you how to do that and I'll show you the shortcuts that I use. So here's my notes on the shortcuts. Here's the menu here to see the ones that are currently set up. Tools, more, alias, functions, keys. Here's a couple of notes. So the code for shift is to put an S in front of the key name. So shift F5 is SF5. For control, you can use capital C or this little squiggly here. This here is an environmental file that you can put these shortcuts in that you want to save permanently so that you don't have to reload them every time. And then these are the shortcuts that I've added to make mine more intuitive. So the M key is move, the R key is rotate, escape is cancel, delete key is delete, T is to add a trace. C is to add copper shape. S is to select a shape. F is to flip. And then the space bar is complete. So in this program, you have to, when you're done, tell it you're complete. So to check out the menu here, you go tools, more alias function keys so that brings up this menu you can see all these different ones in here so done is f6 and that was just a little weird so that's why i changed that to the space bar now these are in addition to all these so i think you can still use the standard ones now if you just want to test these out what you can do is you just write like Funky M move. We can copy that. You can just type that in this command bar right here and hit enter. And that will make that key active. So if I hit M, it's moving it. Now if I hit escape, it cancels it. So to make these permanent, you open up this directory that we were talking about. And you see this file. So this is Cadence SPB 17.4 share PCB text. And there's this file with no extension that's just called ENV. So what I did is I copied that and I named the copy back dash backup just in case I uh, needed to reload it. And then if you right click it, you can open it with a text editor. So I use Notepad++ here. And that brings up this env file and if you scroll down 
to this section here, bind roam operations to function keys. On my file, this is row 234. But you can see these here were the ones that were there before, and I just added mine right here. So that's it for setting everything up. Next time we'll go into more of a deep dive into capture here and how to set up a schematic and how everything links together. And then uh, after that, we can get started making some models. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.